Hey everyone, welcome back to TSC Connect. Okay, so many people with scoliosis feel stiff and want to stretch their back to relieve tension. But which stretches should you avoid if you have scoliosis? In this video, we're going to highlight some of the most common back stretches out there and discuss which ones should be avoided or modified by people who have scoliosis. When someone has a curve in their spine, it can be functional, meaning it's caused by a muscle imbalance or a postural habit that holds the body in that curved position. A spinal curve may also be structural, where the vertebrae actually become wedge-shaped from side to side and from front to back. Think of this as a spectrum, where some people have a purely functional curve, and then most people who have a structural element are somewhere on that scale. The more structural of a curve that you have, the more that the following principles apply. If you have a purely functional curve, these recommendations don't necessarily apply. So chat with your physiotherapist to get an assessment and exercises that can help with your specific situation. When wedge-shaped vertebra are compressed, they will shift towards the larger sides. So, how does compression happen in the spine? Yes, a direct downward force will exert compression forces on the spine, but there are several other ways that this can happen. Let's revisit a couple basics, which we also discuss in our other video, Core Exercises to Avoid When You Have Scoliosis. The possible spinal movements include flexion, extension, side flexion, and rotation, or any combination of the above. When you move toward the end range of any of these movements, the slack in the spine gets taken up and it results in compression. For example, when you take a towel and twist it to its limit, can you see how the whole column compresses and actually increases the rotation in the towel? So the first recommendation, avoid going to the end range of any of the above movements. Let's look at some of the other descriptors of how these movements can be done. These include prolonged hold, repetitive movement, resisted movement, and passive movement. And when you have scoliosis, you don't want to combine any of the spinal movements with these specific descriptors. For stretches, let's focus on the top and the bottom one. The first stretch to avoid if you have scoliosis is the side stretch over a ball. Why? Because this is an example of a movement combination to avoid prolonged hold and side flexion. We see this as a commonly prescribed exercise for people with scoliosis. Although this may seem beneficial to stretch out the tight side, remember that many people with scoliosis have two, three, or even four curves, and this stretch is too general to target any specific curve and may actually be worsening one of the other ones. And sometimes muscles are tight because they're weak and they actually need to be strengthened, not necessarily stretched. And this is counterintuitive, I know. Another example of a stretch to avoid if you have scoliosis, the upward dog and the cobra. Why? Because these are examples of the movement combination, prolonged hold and extension. Many people with scoliosis often have vertebral wedging from the back to the front, meaning the front becomes bigger than normal, which causes them to lose the gentle round in the upper back and actually become too flat. So hanging out in an extended position for a long time further encourages those vertebrae to shift forward, which is more into the curve. Another example of an exercise to avoid if you have scoliosis is the pretzel stretch. Why? Because it combines prolonged hold plus a passive hold plus rotation. This stretch is generated by hooking the elbow onto the thigh and uses the forces from the shoulder to generate the rotation. So even though your upper body is working, it's actually a passive stretch for the spine. And remember the towel analogy where end range rotation takes up the slack in the spine, thus creating more compression, and it actually creates more torsion in the body, which we want to avoid. One last common stretch to avoid if you have scoliosis, the sitting forward bend hamstring stretch. Why? Because it combines prolonged hold plus flexion of the spine and flexion creates compression and the wedge shaped vertebrae will shift towards their bigger side. Flexion also emphasizes the rib prominence on the back, which we want to minimize. Life requires you to move out of spinal neutral in many scenarios, like to rotate to put on your seatbelt, or to lean to the side to reach for something, or perform choreography for your dance routine. 
but for activities like stretches and workouts and conditioning, if you have an opportunity to choose your exercises, let's modify them to be in neutral spine when possible. Instead of listing out all the stretches that you can do when you have scoliosis, head over to our channel, TSC Connect, to look at three videos. The 10 minute scoliosis friendly stretching and flexibility routine, the upper body stretches for the tight back, and top five stretches for scoliosis back pain relief. That'll give you some ideas for some exercises that you can do. If you have any questions about this topic or any requests or comments, please put them down in the comments below and we'll try and answer them when we can. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.